Okay, welcome back to our video series on pharmacology. In this video, we will be discussing chapter number 15, Neurologic Drugs. Uh, learning objectives for this chapter. Name and describe the therapeutic effects of four categories of drugs used to treat seizures. Name and describe the therapeutic effects of five categories of drugs used to treat Parkinson's disease. Describe the therapeutic effects of categories of drugs used to treat dementia and Alzheimer's disease, uh, multiple sclerosis, neuralgia, neuropathy, and insomnia. Explain the difficulties physicians face in treating the lack of dopamine that characterizes Parkinson's disease. When given the name of a well-known neurologic generic drug, identify the trade name. When given the generic and trade names of a neurologic drug, identify what drug category it belongs to and what disease it's used to treat. When given a neurologic drug category, identify several generic and trade name drugs in that category. And lastly, when given an ending common to several generic drugs, identify the related drug category. Right, first, we'll start off with drugs that are used to treat epilepsy. Now, epileptic seizures originate in the brain, and these occur when a group of neurons spontaneously begin to send impulses in a very abnormal, uncontrolled manner. And these impulses spread from neuron to neuron. And there's a range of symptoms that can be exhibited uh, from these seizures. There could be a barely noticeable staring or just a lack of attention. Or there could be a full uh, tonic-clonic seizure with unconsciousness, muscle jerking, tongue biting, and incontinence. And the types of symptoms depends on the number and the location of the affected neuron. Now the drugs that are given to treat epilepsy are known as anticonvulsant drugs because epilepsy is characterized by seizures or convulsions. There are several different categories of drugs that are used to treat epilepsy. And the first group that we'll talk about are the hydantoins. And these act on the cell membrane of the neuron within the motor cortex of the brain. And these affect the flow of the sodium ions both in and out of the cell. And by doing so, this will prevent the neuron from depolarizing and repolarizing uh, too rapidly or repeatedly. Here's some examples of this category of drugs. Ethatoin, sold under the trade name Peganon. Phosphenatoin also known by the trade name Cerebex. Phenotoin, also known by the, the trade name Dilantin. Another category of drugs that are used to treat epilepsy are the uh, succinamide drugs. And these act by depressing the motor cortex of the brain. And these also act by raising the seizure threshold. Here's some examples of this category of drugs. Ethosuximide, sold under the trade name Zerontin. Methsuximide, sold under the brand name Solontin. Another category of drugs that are used to treat epilepsy are the benzodiazepines. And these are a Schedule IV drug. And these act on several different types of receptors uh, throughout the body, which can affect uh, memory, emotion, and muscles. And these are useful in treating a variety of psych psychiatric and muscular disorders also. Now this category of drugs will exert an anticonvulsant effect on receptors within the brainstem. Some examples of this category of drugs would be uh, clonazepam, also known by the trade name clonopin, Clorazepate, also known by the trade name Transine T-Tab, Diazepam, also known as Valium, and Lorazepam, also known as Ativan. See, another category of drugs used to treat epilepsy are barbiturate drugs. And these have a long-acting sedative and anticonvulsant effect. See, some examples of this category of drugs would include Mephobarbital, also known by the trade name Meberol, and Phenobarbital, also known by the name Luminol. See, some other uh, drugs that are used to treat epilepsy you could also treat uh, epilepsy with anticonvulsant drugs. And these are structurally related to GABO. And that stands for gamma aminobutyric acid. And this is a substance within the brain that will inhibit nerve impulses. And some examples of this type of anticonvulsant drug uh, would include gabapentin, also known by the trade name neurotin, pregabalin, also known by the trade name lyrica, and tiagabine, also known by the trade name gabatril. Topiramate, known by the trade names uh, Topamax and Trochendi. Calproic acid, known by the trade names Depakote or Depakine. And also Vigabitrin, known by the trade name Sabril. See, another type of drug used to treat uh, epilepsy are sulfonamides. These are usually used to treat bacterial infections. And these drugs only act as an anticonvulsant drug, although how they work, the actual mechanism of action, is not fully understood. An example of a sulfonamide drug that could be used to treat epilepsy would be zonisamide, which is also known by its trade name, Zonagran. Another type of drug used to treat epilepsy are carbonic anhydrase inhibitor drugs. And these are usually used to treat glaucoma. And the way that these uh, kinds of drugs work is they inhibit the enzyme 
carbonic anhydrase. Now in the eye, this will decrease the rate of aqueous humor that is formed. And in the central nervous system, this causes a buildup of bicarbonate, which will make the tissue slightly acidic. And this change in pH suppresses any stray electrical impulses that could trigger a seizure. An example of this kind of drug would be acetazolamide, also known by its trade name Diamox. See, there are also some other drugs used to treat epilepsy that are chemically unrelated to any other anticonvulsant drug. Mechanism of action is not understood. And these drugs would include carbamazepine, also known by the trade name uh, Tegretol, eslacarbazepine, also known by the trade name Aptium, Lacosamide, known by the trade name Vimpat. Some other examples, Lamotrigine, sold under the trade name Lamictal, Levatiracetam, also known by the trade name Kepra, Oxcarbazepine, known by the trade name Triliptal, Primidone, also known by the trade name Mycelene. All right, now I'll talk a little bit more in depth about uh, treating epilepsy. The choice of drug therapy really depends on the proper classification of the type of seizure based on the patient's clinical symptoms and also brainwave patterns uh, based on an EEG test, electroencephalograph. And there's no one drug that has a therapeutic effect on all kinds of seizures. Now, some drugs that are effective for controlling one type of seizure may actually provoke another type of seizure. In patients with poorly controlled seizures, the physician may try a different anticonvulsant drug uh, to find the one that best controls the patient's seizures. If seizures treated with the drug were under control but then reoccurred, the physician orders a blood test determining the therapeutic level in the blood. If the drug level is subtherapeutic, there would be an increase in drug dose. If the drug level is therapeutic, then a prescription of a different anticonvulsant drug would be needed. There are four common types of seizures. Uh, the most severe is a tonic-clonic, also known as grand mal seizure. The absence, also known as a petite mal. A complex partial, also known as a psychomotor. And the simplest one, a simple partial, known as a focal motor. When it comes to drugs that would be used to treat a grand mal seizure or a tonic-clonic seizure, these kinds of seizures are characterized by unconsciousness, uh, having excessive motor activity, in which the body will alternate between having very rigid muscles, that would be the tonic phase, and then the jerking contractions, which would be the clonic within the extremities. So the person would go back and forth from uh, these two extremes. And because there is such violent jerking motions, it's common for, their, for the patient to actually bite their cheek or actually bite their tongue. So drugs that are, would be used to treat the most severe type of seizures like this would include carbamazepine, also known by the trade name Tegretol, Ethotoin, known by the trade name Pecanone, Phosphenatoin, known by the name Cerebex, Lamotrigine, known by the trade name Lamactyl, Levatiracetam, known by the trade name Kepra, some other examples, Mephobarbital, known by the name Meberol, Phenobarbital, known by the name Luminol, Phenotoin, known by the trade name Dilantin, Primidone, known by the name Misalin, and Topiramate, known by the trade name of Topamax. When it comes to an absent seizure or a petite mal seizure, this is characterized by having impaired consciousness, but with little or no muscle activity. So you can have a, a vacant staring, uh, having repetitive blinking or facial tics, all of which will last for about 10 seconds. Some drugs that are used to treat a petite mal seizure or an absent seizure, acetazolamide, also known as Diamox, Clonazepam, also known as Clonopin, Ethosuximide, also known by the trade name uh, Zerontin, Mephobarbital, known by the name Meberol, Methsuximide, known as uh, Solontin, and Valproic Acid, known by the names Depakine, Depakote, and Stabzor. Right, when it comes to a psychomotor or a complex partial seizure, these are characterized by having some impairment of consciousness, and you'll also have uh, involuntary contractions of one or more muscle groups, such as lip smacking or extremity movement. These are drugs that could be used to treat uh, this type of seizure. Carbamazepine, also known by the name Tegretol. Clorazepate, also known by the name uh, Transine T-Tab. Ethotoin, also known by the name uh, Peganone. Phosphenatoin, known by the name uh, Cerebix. Gabapentin, known by the name Neurontin. Lamotrigine, known by the trade name Lamictal. Levatiracetam, known by the name Kepra. Oxcarbazepine, known by the trade name Triliptal, Phenobarbital, known by the name Luminol, Phenotoin, also known by the name Dilantin, uh, Primidone, known by the name Mycelin, uh, Tiagabine, also known by the trade name Gabatril, uh, Topiramate, known by the name uh, Topamat, Valproic Acid, known by the names Depakine, Depakote, and Stavzor, Vigabatrin, 
also known by the trade name Sabril, and Zonisamide, known by the trade name Zonagran. When it comes to a simple partial or a focal motor seizure, these are characterized by having no impairment of consciousness, but you may have uh, involuntary contractions of one or more muscle groups, you know, turning of the head, jerking of one hand, and so on. Examples of drugs that could be used to treat a simple partial seizure, a chlorazepate, known by the name a transine TTAB, Esli carbazepine, also known by the trade name Aptium, Gabapentin, known by the name Neurontin, Lamotrigine, known by the trade name Lamictal, Levoteracetum, known by the trade name Kepra, Oxcarbazepine, known by the trade name Triliptal, Phenobarbital, known by the name Luminol, Pregabalin, also known by the name Lyrica, Primidone, known by the name Mycelin, Tiagabin, also known by the trade name Gabitril, Dopiramate, known by the name uh, Topamax, Valproic Acid, also known by Dopakine, uh, Depakote, and Stabzor, and Zonisamide, known by the name uh, Zonagran. So now we'll talk about the condition of status epilepticus. And this is a medical emergency. This is a state of a prolonged, continuous seizure. It's also have frequently repeated individual seizures that occur without the patient regaining consciousness. And any seizure that lasts 30 seconds or longer can cause brain damage. So this is something that must be treated immediately. Some examples of drugs that, that can treat this condition. Diazepam, also known by the name uh, Diastat. Phosphenatoin, also known by the name uh, Cerebix. Lorazepam, also known by the name Ativan. And Pentobarbital. All right, now we'll talk about drugs that are used to treat dementia and Alzheimer's disease. All right, we'll start with dementia. Now, this is associated with old age, where it's called senile dementia. Uh, patients who have multiple cardiovascular accidents and strokes, also known as a multi-infarct dementia. It can be associated with brain trauma, chronic drug use, or alcoholism. Uh, also, multiple sclerosis or even Parkinson's disease. Now, Alzheimer's disease is the most most common form of dementia, and this is a irreversible progressive disease. This is caused by the destruction of neurons within the cerebral cortex and the hippocampus of the brain. Now regarding Alzheimer's, the levels of acetylcholine are greatly reduced. And another characteristic of this condition, you have beta amyloid protein plaques that will accumulate between the neurons. You also have neurofibrillary tangles that occur within the neurons. And these tangles are actually the, the primary marker that would indicate Alzheimer's disease. Now the loss of neurons with Alzheimer's will cause difficulty in memory, judgment, and reasoning that will eventually lead to dementia. And the more neurons are destroyed, the greater the degree of cognitive impairment. Right, there are many different categories of drugs that are used to treat Alzheimer's. One category of those drugs are the cholinesterase inhibitor drugs. And the enzyme cholinesterase is an enzyme that will break down acetylcholine. So cholinesterase inhibitor drugs will effectively raise the levels of acetylcholine. And they also help available acetylcholine continue to function without being broken down. But it's important to remember with this category of drugs, it may help to increase the levels of acetylcholine, but it cannot reverse any neurons that have already been destroyed. Uh, some examples of uh, cholinesterase inhibitor drugs, donepezil, which is sold under the trade name Aricept, galantamine, sold under the trade name Razadine, rivastigmine, sold under the trade name Exelon, and Tacrin, which is also known by its trade name, uh, Cognex. Now, the drug Exelon is the only drug for Alzheimer's disease that comes in the form of a transdermal patch. And a new patch is applied every day. And this drug form is convenient for caregivers to use, especially for patients who, are, who have dementia or who are un uncooperative when taking oral drugs. Another uh, class of drugs that's used to treat dementia and Alzheimer's disease are NMDA receptor antagonist drugs. And the way that these act is they keep NMDA uh, receptors in the brain from being overstimulated by the amino acid glutamate. An example of this kind of drug would be mamantine, which is sold under the, the, the trade name Nemenda. Some other types of drugs that are used for Alzheimer's disease, caprilidine, sold under the trade name Axona. This is a nutritional supplement that contains medium chain fatty acids and also has uh, ketone bodies that will stimulate the mitochondria within the nerve cells to produce more energy. See another uh, kind of drug used for Alzheimer's, ergoloid mesolates, and these have an unknown mechanism of action. All right, now we'll move on to drugs that are used to treat Parkinson's disease. Now, Parkinson's disease was first described in 1817 by the English uh, doctor James Parkinson. This is a chronic degenerative condition that affects the brain. This is caused by an imbalance between dopamine and acetylcholine. 
So the lack of dopamine in the brain and the increased levels in acetylcholine are what will lead to symptoms of Parkinson's. Some of the early symptoms of Parkinson's, uh, these will usually appear in a late middle age. There'll be a muscle rigidity, there'll be tremors, and there'll be a slowing of voluntary movements. Uh, some of the later symptoms will be having a mask-like facial expression, having drooling from a rigidity of the facial muscles, there'll be resting tremors, and the loss of the ability to ambulate or walk. Now when it comes to the drugs that are used to treat Parkinson's, they're divided into one of two main groups. Drugs that will either increase uh, the action of dopamine in the brain or drugs that will inhibit the action of acetylcholine. And the goal of the drug therapy here is to restore the natural balance between the levels of dopamine and acetylcholine. All right, now I'll talk a little bit more in depth about, about dopamine. Uh, it was discovered that the metabolic precursor of dopamine, uh, the drug uh, levodopa, could penetrate the blood-brain barrier. Now once in the brain, levodopa is converted by an enzyme into the dopamine that the brain needs. But there are some uh, big drawbacks for levodopa. A very large oral dose had to be given because 99% of the dose of levodopa was converted into dopamine before it could reach the brain. And all this extra dopamine in the blood would cause the side effects. Now it was found that if levodopa was given with carbidopa, the carbidopa inhibited that enzyme. So this allowed more levodopa to cross that blood-brain barrier with a much smaller dose. And carbidopa cannot cross the blood-brain barrier to inhibit that enzyme within the brain. So carbidopa drugs for Parkinson's actually reduced the required dose of levodopa by 75%. And this is also available in a combination drug when treating Parkinson's disease. The brand name that carbidopa is sold under is uh, Lodacin. Another kind of drug that could be used are dopamine agonist drugs. Now these directly stimulate dopamine, dopamine receptors to produce an effect that is similar to that of dopamine. Uh, some examples of this kind of drug, amantadine, which is sold under the brand name Symmetro, apomorphine, sold under the trade name Apokin, bromocryptin, sold under the trade name Parladel, Pramipexol, sold under the brand name of Mirapex, Ropinarol, sold under the brand name of Requip, and Rotigatine, which is sold under the brand name of Nupro. So another uh, type of drug used to treat uh, Parkinson's are MAO inhibitor drugs. Now these drugs act by inhibiting the enzyme in the brain that destroys dopamine. And that enzyme would be monoamine oxidase. That's why it's MAO inhibitor drugs. So by using MAO inhibitors, you will have a result of increased levels of dopamine. And some examples of this type of drug would be resagiline, sold under the brand name of Azolect, and also selegiline which is sold under the trade names of MSAM and Edipril. Now the type of drug that's used to treat Parkinson's are anticholinergic drugs. Now these work by inhibiting the action of acetylcholine at cholinergic receptors in the brain. And it also helps to prolong the action of dopamine that is present. Some examples of this kind of drug would be benztropine, which is sold under the brand name of Gogentin, and also the drug trihexyphenidyl, which is sold under the brand name of trihexy. Another type of uh, drug used to treat uh, Parkinson's disease are COMT inhibitor drugs. COMT stands for catechol o methyltransferase And this is the main enzyme that will metabolize the drug levodopa within the blood. So by inhibiting that enzyme, you will result in an increased level of levodopa within the blood. So more is available to cross the blood-brain barrier. And some examples of this kind of drug, entacapone, which is sold under the brand name of Comtan, and you can tell by the trade name, Comtan, is reflected that it is a COMT inhibitor. COMT listed here in the beginning part of the trade name. And also Rolcapone, which is sold under the trade name of Tasmar. These are some other drugs that are used to treat Parkinson's. Uh, some drugs are used just to treat tremors and the rigidity, uh, such as atropine, which is sold under the name of Saltropine. And also the drug Hyosiamine, which is sold under the name of Lefsin. Some other drugs would include uh, cholinesterase inhibitors that are used to treat the associated dementia that comes with Parkinson's. An example of this kind of drug would be rivastigmine, which is sold as the trade name Exelon. Also, we'll find uh, combination drugs that are used to treat Parkinson's, and these will contain carbidopa and levodopa. And some examples of this kind of drug would include parcopa, uh, cinnamet, and stilevo. And stilevo also contains a COMP inhibitor drug, antacapone. None of the aforementioned drugs can cure Parkinson's disease. Over time, tolerance to a drug's therapeutic effect can develop. 
So at that point, a larger drug dose is required to maintain control of the symptoms of Parkinson's. But of course, with a larger dose, will also produce more side effects. So when a dose can no longer be increased or the side effects become intolerable, the physician will gradually withdraw the drug, placing the patient on a drug holiday for a few days. And when the drug therapy starts up again, the patient will respond to lower doses of anti-Parkinsonian drugs. All right, now we'll talk about drugs that are used to treat multiple sclerosis. Now, multiple sclerosis is an autoimmune disease. The body makes antibodies against the myelin covering around nerves. This results in acute inflammation with chronic progressive interruption of nerve conduction between the brain and the spinal cord. Some common symptoms of uh, multiple sclerosis include double vision, large muscle weakness, an uncoordinated gait, muscle spasticity, tremors, and neuralgias. There are multiple types of drug categories that are used to treat MS. One category is an immunosuppressant monoclonal antibody drug. An example of this category would be natalizumab, which is sold as the trade name Tizabri. Another category of drugs used to treat MS are immunosuppressants. And some examples of this would include azathioprine, which is sold as the tr- trade name uh, Imuran, Glatirimir, which is sold as the trade name Copaxone, Interferon Beta-1, which is sold as the trade names of Rebif and Avonex, Interferon Beta-1B, sold as Betaseron or Xdavia. Another category of drugs would be immunomodulator drugs. An example of this would be Vengolimod, which is sold as the trade name of Jelenia. Another category of drugs would include muscle relaxant drugs, such as Baclofen, which is sold as the trade name of Leorosal, and also Tizanidine, which is sold as the trade name of Xanaflex. Another category of drug would be a benzodiazepine anti-anxiety drug that has muscle relaxant properties, such as diazepam, which is also known as Valium. Another category would be a potassium channel blocker. An example of this would be dalfampridine, which is sold as a trade name Empira. Another category would include the corticosteroid drugs, such as prednisone or methylprednisolone, which would be sold as either medrol or solumedrol. Another category would include a chemotherapy drugs, such as mitoxantrone, which is sold as a trade name of novantrone. Another category would be botulinum toxin type A, more commonly known as uh, Botox. It's to be used for upper limb uh, spasticity. And some other drugs that could be used to treat MS, dimethyl fumarate, which is sold as the trade name of Tecfidera. All right, now we'll move on to drugs that are used to treat neuralgia and neuropathy. When it comes to neuropathy, this is a disease of the nerves that often results in neuralgia, or which is also known as nerve pain. And this can be associated with several different conditions that cause chronic pain and unusual sensations. See, one example of this would be peripheral neuropathy. This is a general category that includes any type of injury or any type of disease uh, to the nerves that are in the extremities. An example of this would be diabetic neuropathy. And this is a chronic complication of diabetes. This is characterized by uh, pain and then altered sensations in both feet and in the legs. See, another example of this would be uh, posturpedic neuralgia. And this is caused by shingles, which is an infection of the herpes virus that originally comes from chickenpox. This will reappear in older patients and also will reappear at times of stress or illness. And this can cause chronic, painful skin eruptions that run along the inflamed nerve pathways. So another example of this would be phantom limb pain. And that's characterized by having pain and unusual sensations, and they seem to be coming from an extremity that has been already amputated and is no longer there. So even though the limb may be gone physically, the nerves that would supply that limb are still there. An example of this would be restless leg syndrome. This is characterized by having a restlessness and a twitching of the muscles in the legs, in particular of the calf muscles. This goes along with a indescribable tingling or aching or a sensation of an insect crawling on your legs. And these symptoms occur mainly at night and may be severe enough to prevent the person from being able to sleep. When it comes to drugs that are used to treat neuralgia and neuropathy, there are uh, several different categories. One category would be uh, dopamine agonist drugs, such as uh, reticotine, also known as uh, Nupro. Another category would be tricyclic antidepressant drugs, such as amitriptyline, dizipramine, also known as norpramine, and nortriptyline, also known as uh, Pamelor or Avental. Another category would be tetracyclic antidepressant drugs, such as uh, Maprotoline. Some other categories of drugs that are used to treat uh, neuralgia and neuropathy, SNRI antidepressants. An example of this kind of drug would be duloxetine, also known as Cymbalta. Another category would be the SSRI 
antidepressants, the selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor drugs. An example of this class would be proxetine, also known by its trade name Paxil. The other category of drugs used here would be uh, anticonvulsants, such as carbamazepine, also known as the trade name of Tegretol, gabapentin, known by its trade names Graylis, Horzantz, Neurontin, and also uh, pregabalin, also known by the name Lyrica. Another category for these conditions, angiotensin II receptor blocker drugs, such as Herbisartan, also known by the trade name Avapro, and Losartan, also known as the trade name Kozar. Another category would be uh, topical irritants or anesthesia drugs, such as uh, capsaicin, also known as uh, capsin or Zostrix, and also lidocaine, which would be sold under the trade name of Lidoderm. And when it comes to drugs that are used to treat restless leg syndrome, there are two main kinds. One is a Schedule 4 benzodiazepine anti-anxiety drug, such as clonazepam, also known by the trade name clonopin. Another kind could be dopamine receptor stimulant drugs that are also used to treat Parkinson's disease, such as Premapexol, also known by the trade name Meripex, and also the drug Ropinarol, known by its trade name Requip. All right, now we'll talk about drugs that are used to treat insomnia. Now, insomnia is characterized by having a difficulty falling asleep and then awakening during the night, and then once they are awake, having difficulty getting back to sleep. And this can be exacerbated by anxiety or stress or pain. There are various categories of drugs that are used to treat insomnia. Uh, one kind are hypnotic and sedative drugs, and these are used to induce sleep. These are only used as a short-term basis to treat insomnia. The other category you could have that helps to treat insomnia are non-barbiturate hypnotic and sedative drugs. And these act by depressing the central nervous system to produce sedation in sleep. And these are a Schedule IV drug because they have some potential for addiction. Uh, some examples of this kind of drug would be chloral hydrate, known by the trade name Somnote, Esopiclone, known by the popular trade name Lunesta, Zaloplon, also known by the trade name uh, Sonata, Zolpidem, known by its very popular trade names Ambien, Intermezzo, and Zopamist. And now we'll talk about a quick drug alert about the drug Intermezzo. This is specifically designed to help patients who wake up in the middle of the night and then who can't get back to sleep. And it's even marketed as the get back to sleep pill. It is a fast-acting, low-dose uh, sublingual tablet that is formulated to only provide four hours of sleep. It's another kind of uh, drug that used to treat insomnia are melatonin receptor agonist drugs. Now, the hormone melatonin is secreted by the pineal gland within the brain. And this is the hormone that helps to regulate the 24-hour wake-sleep cycle. So these uh, agonist drugs will stimulate melatonin receptors, causing an increased desire to sleep. These are available as a dietary supplement that is available over-the-counter. Uh, some examples of drugs that fit this category would be uh, Remelteon, which is sold by the trade name Rosarum. And this drug acts uh, to stimulate the melatonin receptors to induce sleep and to treat insomnia. And this is not a scheduled drug. Now, some patients who take Ambien have reported an unusual adverse uh, drug effect of amnesia you know, while working or eating or even while driving. This usually occurs when the patient takes Ambien but then doesn't go to bed. They continue to stay awake or they take Ambien and they don't get a full eight hours sleep before becoming uh, active again. And between the years of 2005 and 2010, emergency room visits have tripled for the adverse drug effects caused by sleeping pills. So another kind of drug that could be used to treat insomnia are benzodiazepine anti-anxiety drugs. And these have a hypnotic effect because they enhance the action of GABA. And GABA is a neurotransmitter in the brain that inhibits nerve impulses. And GABA, the acronym that stands for gamma aminobutyric acid. And these are Schedule IV drugs that have some potential for addiction. Some examples of uh, this kind of drug is Dazolam, known by its trade name Prosom, Fluoracepam, also known by the trade name Dalmain, Quazepam, also known by the trade name Doral, Temazepam, also known by the name Restoral, and also Triazolam, known by its trade name Halcyon. So another type of uh, category used to treat insomnia would be antidepressant drugs, such as Doxepin, better known by its trade name Selenor, and Trazodone, also known by its trade name Oleptra. Another category of drugs that are used to treat insomnia are barbiturate drugs. And these act by providing uh, sedation, and specifically for insomnia. And these are a Schedule II drug with a high potential for addiction. So these are going to be used infrequently. And some examples of this kind of drug would be amobarbital, known by the trade name amitol, pentobarbital, secobarbital, 
known by the trade name uh, Secanol. Some other drugs that are used to treat insomnia include over-the-counter uh, sleep aids that contain an antihistamine drug. And they work because the antihistamine's side effect of drowsiness now becomes the therapeutic effect to induce sleep. And a drug that would fall in this category would be diphenhydramine, which would be sold under the trade names of Compos, uh, Nitol, and Somonex. An example of this drug would be doxylamine, also known by the trade names uh, Unisom. You can also find uh, combination drugs that are used to treat insomnia. These combination drugs would include antihistamine, such as diphenhydramine, and analgesic drug, such as ibuprofen or acetaminophen, to help treat the pain that will cause insomnia. And some will even contain magnesium to help relax muscles. Uh, some common examples of combination drugs, Advil PM, that's really a combination of ibuprofen and diphenhydramine. Alka-Seltzer PM is a combination of aspirin and diphenhydramine. Bayer PM Extra Strength, a combination of aspirin and diphenhydramine. Doan's PM Extra Strength, a combination of diphenhydramine and magnesium. Excedrin PM, a combination of acetaminophen and diphenhydramine. Somonix Pain Relief is a combination of acetaminophen and diphenhydramine. Tylenol PM Extra Strength, a combination of acetaminophen and diphenhydramine. And Unisom with Pain Relief, a combination of diphenhydramine and acetaminophen. Okay, that brings us to the end of this chapter, uh, chapter number 15. Uh, we will continue our video series on pharmacology with our next video on chapter number 16, Psychiatric Drugs.